I love that um, the fact that the language became standardized helped increase adoption because it gives people trust that this is a, an official thing and that you know what you're getting. Um, so that I just me like a pretty important milestone. I'm wondering, are there any other important milestones in the early history of SQL that you think are important? Sure. Uh, before we leave the standards uh, uh, subject, I want to give a disclaimer here. Uh, during the decade of the 80s, uh, when a lot of this standards work was being done, I actually took a leave from the database world and got involved in uh, desktop publishing. That seemed to me to be the exciting thing that was happening <laughs> in the 1980s. Uh, but IBM finally decided not to go into that business, so uh, so I returned to the database world uh, around 1990. But by that time, a lot of the standards work had, had already been done, so uh, the credit for that belongs to other people. Well, during the 1980s, the revolution in data management uh, really hit full stride. The cost of computing and storage kept on coming down. The volume of data generated by businesses uh, just expanded enormously. Uh, almost every business system, uh, almost every business needed to acquire a system to manage their data. Oracle, of course, continued to prosper. But lots of other new relational products entered the market. There was DB2 and Informix and Sybase and Tandem and Microsoft SQL Server. They all offered implementations of the SQL language. It seemed to be room in the market for everybody. In fact, so many products were claiming to be relational that in 1985, uh, Ted Codd published a, a series of 12 rules that define an authentic relational database. And you can find these uh, rules in Wikipedia. Just uh, just search for Cod's 12 rules. But starting in the 1990s, there were some truly game-changing developments. Three very high-quality open source SQL implementations became available. Uh, their names were MySQL and PostgreSQL and SQLite. And all three of these were, were fully featured, reliable, high-performance systems with large user communities. Uh, they all had free versions, and also they had additional services that you could buy for a fee. Well, web-based applications were proliferating in the 1990s. That was the dot-com days, and, and many of these apps uh, used one of these open source systems for data management. Uh, SQLite in particular is, is interesting because it's embedded invisibly all over the place. Uh, it's in most smartphones and browsers and, and many popular applications. Uh, so these, uh, these three open source SQL systems are now among the most widely used database systems in the world. Absolutely. Um, they are incredibly popular, all three of them. And these are things that we still teach now on DataCamp. If you want to learn to use databases, use uh, Postgres or one of these other ones. So yeah, uh, it's had a, a huge impact. And actually, even at 50 years old, SQL is still one of the most popular programming languages. So um, on things like the Tyobe Index, the IEE Spectrum Index, like most popular programming languages, SQL is just, it's always in the top 10. So I'm wondering, um, how do you account for its longevity? I can think of several reasons for that. The first and most important reason is Ted Codd got it right. The relational model is simple and powerful and flexible and elegant. And really that made everything else possible. Uh, but second, I think it helped a lot that the early research by both System R and the Ingress project at, at Cal were published openly. Uh, so there were basically no impediments to commercialization of this technology. That research was given away for free. Uh, third, I think the ANSI standard uh, provided a well-defined language specification and a way for the language to evolve to meet new requirements. And uh, that kept it uh, alive and well uh, as new requirements uh, came along over, over a period of decades. And fourth, and, and this is really very important, are those uh, high quality open source SQL implementations available for free. Well, what's not to like about that? 